um basically uh, uh the programming club is kind of concerned that uh, people are still using c in competitive programming on code forces and for the recent icpt contest that you guys gave but uh, and like you should switch to c++ there are a lot of reasons for that and i'll be going over that only today uh, i'll be introducing uh, like i'll be kind of assisting you how to switch from c to cpp in these two sessions in the first one we'll go over basics and uh, in the second one we'll be go a bit like more advanced <coughs> and uh, <clears throat> so let's first uh, see like there should be uh, let's look at the stat like if you go on code forces or if you go on icpc uh, website and look at the submissions that are made during the contest you'll see that uh, like 80% of submissions are made in c++ so like there should be a reason why people are using c++ right um so it's mainly because of a library called stl that is a standard template library and it has like a lot of uh, data structures and functions already implemented for you which are used for like various programming purposes but uh, uh, they they come especially they come in handy especially in computer programming of all of these already implemented data structures and uh, algorithms um and just before starting c++ i also would like to mention why not to use python all right um uh, like firstly python is extremely slow compared to c or c++ it's it's better to use c than to use python because most of the time it is going to give you a time limit exceeded error just just because of the input output uh slowness of python and the runtime is also quite slow uh the operations that you do plus minus any kind of operation even the start, uh, like recursion when you call in functions uh, it's a lot slower compared to uh, uh, like primitive language like c and c++ so that's also going to give you a tld and uh, it's 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 really easy to make mistakes because there isn't there isn't any uh, like there isn't any proper data type uh a same variable can take a float value or an integer value and uh, there are like multiple compilers for python uh, interpreters is the correct word though uh, for python there are pypy which is so which is supposed to be faster compared to the standard python interpreter, interpreter. so uh, it might often be confusing that uh, which one you should use to submit your uh, code so that that's why you shouldn't use python and so let's let's get started with cheap this so till now uh, uh, you were using like c right so the center for that for c dot c for cpp it's a c plus plus cpp or dot capital c i like to use dot cpp so uh, how do we rahul sorry uh, to interrupt discord is okay recall uh, recording uh, has it not been started Oh, I, I clicked on auto record. Let me check. So now it doesn't look like it. I don't even see an option to start the recording. Okay, I have one option. I just click it. Oh, if you have that option, then yeah, please do it. because i can't find it you need to give me some kind of a permission to oh that. oh okay if you could request for the permission i can approve it from here yeah, don't it doesn't seem mm -hmm. to be giving it to me anyway never mind like Um, yeah um i think it's it's more important to record the second session compared to right right yeah this this one is never mind yeah yeah. Uh, yeah okay and we have like 90 participants that already are the number mm -hmm. oh okay so oh uh, let's uh, introduce uh, uh, sorry yeah uh, let's get started so uh, firstly you want to include the standard template library right uh the standard template library is like divided into multiple header files but uh, if you want to include all the header files then you use this uh, include line 
it's like a uh, seeing cubes only right uh, in, in, uh, you used to use this word include and include libraries and it's similar in CPP. A lot of CPP and uh, a lot of C++ is really similar to C and syntax. And uh, into main and return, these are really, these are necessary, uh, like you need to have a main function. That's all right. So um, in C, usually you, you when you suppose you, you have to take an uh, input, right? You do int n. And then uh, you, you scan it and take it and take the input. Not that right, something like that. But uh, in in C plus uh, plus, uh, like there is this problem. You have to declare uh, D for integers and F for floats. And but C plus plus, you don't have to bother bother with that. You can just do uh, std cn and and this n could have been a float or an integer or anything, and it's going to take the input. And um, this is um, like uh, I'll, I'll explain a bit. Let me write the code first, and then you can output it. So, like, let's turn this once. You used to use GCC for compiling C, but you use C++ for C++. Uh, uh, if I input three. It's going to output three, and this is something like basically I did not include a new line character. The thing you notice is that uh, it's uh, I I use a float, but the output wasn't a float; it was simply a number, and like there should be a dot zero or point zero or something, right? If I do three four point zero, the output's going to be uh, four. Like that's a different thing. That's uh, we're going to fix that later. But the thing is, uh, you can use integers and strings, whatever you want, and you don't have to bother with that. Bother with specifying data type. You can just, uh, uh, it, it can be anything. Yeah. Cool. So uh, one thing you notice is that, uh, uh, see, oh, this standard thing, we don't need that. Let's, let's explain this first. So there's something called namespaces in C++ um, when you declare functions. Suppose you have a library and a multi-file library. You might have functions that have same names, and those same names can create collisions, right, when you include all of them. So to counter that, C++ introduced a new feature called namespaces. If you define the functions into different namespaces, right, then uh, you can call. Then you can include both of them. So suppose if you want to use two different libraries which have some function declared as int add, which basically adds to integers. Right. Um, two different libraries might have the same functions and or. Uh, if you want to include the two libraries, you won't be able to do that in C because uh, of the collision of the same variable, uh, same name for the functions. But if you use namespaces for different functions, then that won't happen. But mainly, you don't have to bother about this thing at all in competitive programming because in competitive programming, you have to include one single library. That's the standard template library. And in that library, there aren't any collisions. So you use this line called using namespace. You use the namespace std. And then you can use the use all the functions that are declared under this namespace. C in and C out were declared in this namespace. So you can just get rid of these lines and directly do C in and C out. So this is this was for input. Oh sorry, I'm using uh, this is for command in C plus plus. Yeah, this was for input and this is for output. And these are the stream operators used for assigning. You can basically imagine this to be um, you, you see and it takes the input and kind of pipes it to n. And for outputting whatever n is, is it throws the output in this direction to see out. That's how I remember it. But you'll get used to it uh, quite soon enough. So that's how you do basic IO operations in C++. Uh, and uh, uh, there, see, oh, okay. Cool. Um, there's one more thing, uh, a thing called fast IO, but I'll go over that later. Let's, let's, let's get to vectors, okay? Okay, so
Um, basically, uh, in C, when you had to input, uh, you would have solved OJ problems where there's an integer n and you have to take n number of inputs, right? So it's something like int n, then you take the input using printf. But I'm, I'll be using C in over here now. And then you declare an integer array of maybe 5000 or 500. And uh, you assume that whatever n is, it's going to be less than 5000. And then you do a for loop and take input one by one. Uh, the, uh, the array limits you take them in, but uh, like this is really inconvenient. Um, what if you want to dynamically allocate memory only for size of n? Then I mean there should be a better way to do it, right? Uh, C plus plus introduces that, but C also in C also you probably could use malloc. You could allocate memory, you could uh, and then deallocate it. But that's also really inconvenient doing it every time. It gets repetitive. So to counter that, uh, C plus plus has vectors. So uh, we use hash include vector to include the vector library. But uh, I, I did this just to demonstrate it over here. But uh, it already is there in the this main header file when you include it. So I don't need, actually need to do it over here. Let's, let's see how you declare vectors. You simply do vector and angular brackets. Inside angular brackets, you specify the data type. It could be integer. It could be a float. I'll use an integer for now. And then you declare the vector. I'm going to call it ARR array. And like that, this is pretty similar to int ARR. Right? But uh, like this, whatever you, do, you, you, you you keep up for, uh, uh, I mean, sorry, I'll change the name. Yeah, you, you, you keep any number over here to declare, right? But in vector, you don't need to do that. You can just declare it like that. But if you want to specify a number, you can specify it in brackets over here as an argument we can pass the, uh, the value n as an argument so what is this going to do this is going to declare internally a size uh, an array of exactly size n internally it is going to use malloc but you don't have to write it yourself that's the good thing about it and then you can iterate over it and take input arr just the way you did it uh, in uh, in C. In C, you probably uh, uh, you, you can use scanf too. You probably used to do like that. Um, I think I forgot ampersand. I always forget this. Yeah. And the good thing is you don't have to bother with ampersand because if you use like if for strings you probably use character arrays and then you use ampersand and that gave a segmentation for for something like that. Uh, because to, for array, it's already a pointer. So you don't have to bother with all those stuff when you use CN uh, instead of scanf. And you take the input like that. That's all right. Uh, and uh, um, but what was So for next? example, uh, you can take a vector of string and you don't need to change the code in any way. Like it's not a headache like it otherwise would be in um, C, for example. And, uh, oh, okay, there are some messages I'll see. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm handling the messages. Uh, okay. Don't just can you once show them the iOS based thing? Oh, so you want me to show that right now? Okay. Yeah, I mean we can show that later. So let's okay. Uh, yeah, I can do that too. Okay, I'll do it. Oh, uh, particularly I'll look for the line. I keep forgetting what the exact line is, right? So I saw uh, somewhere in the chat that someone said, okay, uh, is it C in and C out slower than scanf and printf? That, that, that should get slower. Uh, and uh, of, not often, but a very few cases, you can see that, that it causes a uh, time, uh, time limit error because of the slowness of the input output. Can you zoom in but you can, maybe point one okay, a bit more. Is it any better? I guess so. Seven seven eight seven, but okay. okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, a C in and C out can cause time limit. That's that's true, and I've I've also faced that in my life. But you can kind of counter that using a, a neat little trick that's uh, that's often called fast I/O in CP language in computer programming. It's a computer programming slang. So, uh, you can use this line I/O base sync. And then cn dot star. 
and then I think it's the out that uh, zero. Yeah, zero. I use underscore. Oh, sorry. Yeah, my bad. Yeah. So, uh, uh, see, uh, you could have user. Uh, the thing is, C plus plus allows you to interchange between printf scanner CNC out freely, and uh, it, it is one of the reasons why it is slow. Right? It has to deal with both the things and not only one. So, what this line does is it uh, it. Uh, it removes that synchronization. It it removes that ability uh, for it to be working with STDIO, that is printf and scanf. So once you get rid of that, it becomes a bit faster. And this thing is it basically ties your buffers together so that uh, your input output buffer together so that it doesn't have to refresh it again and again. So internally it refreshes it again and again, which causes again, of course, that makes sense, right? It does that operation again and again, and it creates slowness. You can counter that using this. But once you put this line over here, you cannot use printf and scanf and uh, at all then because it has been removed using this line. Okay, so you'll have to use CNC out. Or if you want fast I/O, then you can like fast input output. Then you can use printf and scanf only and don't use CNC out at all. But that's not recommended since it's very tedious to type and but you have to declare um, you know, the data types while printing and all. It's 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 better to spend that time thinking of the problem logics rather than typing these things out. Oh, so that yeah, this was I/O. Uh, I was now not including this line. Okay. Oh, uh, we were we were in vectors, right? So yeah, oh uh, yeah. I I told you uh, how we can declare vectors using a uh, vector in vec or array, whatever I can call it. Uh, the thing, uh, you can you can specify the type already. You can type five in here, or you can in fact uh, take input and and then uh, you can uh, declare it of a variable size by taking the input. Um, and what else you can do is that you can keep it like that only. And while you're iterating, you you can increase the size. Oops. You can uh, increase the size of the vector one by one as in when you take out. Uh, take the input. So you can do something like int i equals zero. R you can uh, you can take an integer x. That's going to be the input. You can input it, and then you can use this function called vec dot push back. What is what this is going to do is it's going to uh, put the vector at the back of your array. So if your your array is something like one, comma two, comma three. Then vec dot push push back dot four is gonna change it to this thing one com one two three four and uh, it's order one the operation uh, what internally does it when when you say a vector you when you declare it like a blank vector without any predefined size it preallocates some some amount of memory already and uh, it just uh, assigns uh, whatever you input to the to the block of memory. And uh, internally, uh, once uh, it exceeds that, uh, suppose internally it allocated memory of size eight, then uh, it switches from eight to sixteen later on. If you if your input exceeds eight number of uh, bytes, uh, no, sorry, eight number of integers, sorry. And uh, so so like uh, see, there's this switching. It switches from eight to sixteen, then from sixteen to thirty two, and like that. So uh, it it takes like log n number of steps to increase the number uh, to go to a huge uh, amount of input, so it's it's pretty fast. But it's it's always better to declare the uh, size already if you know what the size is. Then it won't have to do that long nine number of operations. Though it's really fast in doing that too. All right. Um. So here we are. Actually, uh, uh, at this point, it might be good to mention that the constant complexity is actually amortized. So what Rahul is mentioning, as you might have seen, if the vector has eight elements and you push one more, then it has to Allocate memory for 16 elements and copy all the elements back into the new space. So you might question that how is this constant time? But over a lot of operations, on average, this turns out to be constant time. So yeah, exactly. So yeah, yeah. Once you have like one million, that is 10 to the power six number of operations, uh, that that amount of inputs. So if you look at that, then it would have to be switched on the log in log log base two of 10 to the power six times. That is, uh, what's the value? I think 20. 
so it's it's like a additional 20 constant so it, it's it, it can be treated as in k like uh, as in uh, order one operation kind of but that happens only when the uh, total number of input is huge all right um so that is i, I hope everyone is like comfortable with uh, vectors right they just like arrays you you would have to clear like that and then you can instead of this you can just do cn of uh, array of i to take uh, input when n is less than 500 that has to be guaranteed but you don't want to bother writing 500 each and every time right you can write back like you can use vectors so sure. yeah sir i've also seen many people uh, doing actually uh, when they actually declare the vector they just after that resize the vector so what is the point of doing that okay um it's 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 the same as uh, like if you do ve vector so basically when you do this thing n right it declares a vector of uh, size n it's the same as doing nothing like passing on nothing and doing vec dot resize n okay it, it's the same thing so what they might be doing is i'll tell you uh, in have you solved some uh, problems of code forces Uh, if you if you have in the you will find they have test cases right so they have this t they take in t and they have a while loop and they do their calculations over here so maybe they declare a vector over here of any size and then they resize it they take the input n over here and then they resize it over here like you have to resize it because you have been specified n, right? And you have to take an array of, uh, you have to take a vector of size n, or an array of size n. That this might be the reason that they're doing it because they have declared it above. Else, what you could have done is you could have removed this and uh, done vector in web n. Oh, is this clear? I hope yes. it is. Cool. So uh, I, I hope like by this time, if uh, like yeah. vector int is just like any other type. So don't look at vector int and think of it as some kind of magic. It's just like int, string, yes. or float, or any data type you have been using previously. It's just another data type. Yes, it is. It is. It is. It is in most sense, it is like similar to int array of five. That's the closest uh, I can say. And then you can use float. In a similar way, you can use a uh, vector of float. Later on, you'll find that this is kind of uh, more powerful than uh, this thing. It's like this kind of declaration because you can, in fact, create a vector of objects. But we will come to that soon. Um, let's let's go over one more thing that is uh, sorting, uh, sorting of vectors. So, uh, in in C, you probably use the function called qsort, right? And then you had to, I think, do array, and then array plus n if there was some array declared over there, and then pass in some kind of comparator, and you had to write a comparator function which return minus one, zero, or one, something like that. But um, like this is really tedious. And plus, uh, one more thing is that quick sort, though it is a really fast algorithm, uh, in the worst case. It can take n square operations if there are n number of elements that have to be sorted. So there's a in C plus plus you have uh, an inbuilt function called sort uh, in, in the standard template library. It is included in the algorithm header. So like I'm just specifying it over here, but it is there in uh, this thing when you include it. So if you have a vector. Of size n. Rahul, might be a good time to show them the docs for algorithm, like just to drive home the. Which algorithm? The header file. They can look it up online as well. Okay, the documentation. Okay, right. en dot cpp reference dot com. Right. So, like, whatever I'm telling you, like, how do I know it? It's it's because of the documentation the that is available online. Right, so this is like you could say the Bible. Whatever you don't know, you can come here and refer to it. So, uh, let's 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 have search so Yeah, so let me search vector. Uh, 
Oh. Oh, okay. Oh, my bad. Sorry, I'm not sharing my browser screen, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I'll do that one sec. Application window. Hmm. Okay. Oh, if I search vector on this website, I'll find that. Oh, okay. There's this. Oh, uh, uh, this uh, uh, object called vector. And like this, uh, I told you about namespaces, right? You don't have to put that because you're using this line called using namespace std. So. Uh, uh, how, how do I uh, how did I find K you can actually push back into the vector? So if you come over here, you, you'll find that uh, there are they, they have mentioned all the methods associated with it. You can push back, you can resize the one that someone mentioned. You can resize them, so you can find all the methods available over there. Uh, what uh, for? Let, let's take clear. So uh, like it's pretty event, right? You can you can clear an entire vector using clear. Like everything that I mentioned, and I, I'm not going to mention everything, but whatever you want to know, you can find it over here related to any uh, any object or any uh, any algorithm in uh, or any data structure in the standard template library. It's 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 the official documentation of C++. I I quickly switch to the other window. All right. Um, we were in sorting, right? Just let me change this domain. So suppose I have a vector and I do something, and I take all the inputs that I want, and I need to now sort that input. So for uh, the function that I told was sort. What you have to pass here are iterators. I'll cover iterators later. Don't worry about this. But there's something called vector begin, which is basically a pointer to the beginning of the array, and then there's vector end, which is a pointer to the end of the array, and this will sort it for you. It is similar to QSort, right? You you pass in array and then array plus n something like that. The start and the end of the array. It's similar to that. And uh, it, it's it's going to sort it for you. By default, it has an internal comparator, which is pretty straightforward. That's ascending order of integers or whatever you pass. Uh, but you can write custom comparators too, and we're going to cover that in the next session. Uh, what if you want to sort it in decreasing order? We could do sort and then reverse it. So reverse is also another function available in the algorithms. Oh, head of five. You can also you can show the R begin R end. Okay. Yeah. Um. I think like that. That should be covered during iterators, not right? Cool. Cool. Yeah. So, uh, what are the advantages of this sort? This sort is like is like a really smart sorting algorithm. What is does it? It it uses quick sort internally because quick sort is a really fast algorithm. It just doesn't perform well in some cases. And if it is one of those cases where it, it sees that it checks itself that it's not performing well, it's taking a lot of time, then it switches to a different algorithm, which is guaranteed to terminate in n log n. That's heap sort algorithm. So quick sort works really fine, uh, really well. But in some cases, it can take to it can take up to order of n square operations. But it, it recognizes that and switches it quickly. So that's why it's like a really good sorting algorithm, and it's much more superior to the Q sort function available in C. Oh, that's how you sort vectors. Um, let me quickly declare a vector and present it to you guys for sorting. So basically, I don't want to input the vector. I'll just declare the vector. If you want to declare a vector, uh, you can like this is more way to declare the vector: five comma four comma three comma two comma one. And then I can do, I can sort it and then sort in five two three one. It's five elements. Now I have to count that there are five elements over here, right? What would be a better way to do that? If you go to the documentation, you'll find that vector has another method called vector size. So internally, whenever you push in a value in the vector, and when you push uh, and uh, whenever you insert an input, it, it keeps track of the number of elements inside the vector always. So whenever you push back or whenever you resize it, it has an internal variable storing the size of the vector. 
and it increments or decrements the size accordingly. So you don't have to actually keep remember what the size of the vector is in a separate variable. It, it's going to do it for you. So I use that feature over here, and I can I can print it out. Okay. Uh, it, it sorted for me. So, um, what people usually do, you, you saw me that I printed a new line, right? But what we, you, you often see that people use endl instead of a uh, new line. What endl does it, 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 there's a new line character that it, it represents two things. It's a new line character plus it's a flush operation. What flush is, does it, it, it uh, clears your buffer for the input and output streams. So, uh, it, it's kind of slower than. Uh, Backslash in, but uh, like it, it's faster to type out, so I do it do, do it that way. Yeah, it's sorted. Um, next, we're gonna jump on to strings. So, uh, let's see. So basically, what what did you do in C? Um, round okay. or, wait, just a second. Can you undo? Yeah. Can you show the code back? Yeah. Yeah. If anyone has any questions related to Vic, now might be a good time to just. Quickly ask. For yeah, and any kind of question related to vectors. Yeah, like no, no question is silly or wrong or anything like that. Um, so I can say, for example, if we uh, had a size, uh, if we had an array of a constant size, we could just like do um, int array five equal to in curly bracket zero, and that would you know put zeros in all the places. So it's the yeah. thing there in vectors as well. Yeah. Uh, so by default, when you declare a size, uh, like if you do vector int uh, vec and put n over here, it is gonna assign uh, like n is not declared over here. It is gonna assign. It is gonna allocate the mem uh, n n number of n into four number of bytes for you, and it's gonna put zeros everywhere for you. Yeah, it does that. Actually, an even cooler thing is if your vector is of strings. It's gonna put empty string everywhere. So whatever your data type of the element yeah. is, it's gonna initialize your default value for that element. Yeah, uh, we haven't covered string. I'm going to cover it yet. But in case you know that a string is always like a, like oh, oh, yeah, whenever you do vector string, it's gonna like do an empty string. An empty string is something like this. Yeah, that's true. Whatever your data type is, it's gonna keep the default one or whatever the empty. Uh, and like uh, for every data type, there, there, there would be something that represents null or empty. Yes, it, it's gonna put that. Um, uh, any any other questions? You said that uh, vectors are like any other data type. So can we have a vector yeah. of vectors? Yeah, it, it's not a data type, but yeah, you can have vector of vectors. Uh, I was going to. Yeah, I, thanks for reminding me. Is it yeah, vector I, more of a structure than a data type? That that's correct. That's correct. Uh, I was uh, like the data type is the current wrong word. It's it, it's actually an object. So you, you know structures, right? Uh, there is much more advanced uh, form of structure called classes, and vector is a class. And when you do a vector uh, end of something and you call it vec, vec is an instance of that. And it's called an object. So if you in C you probably did struct uh, uh, and like you gave it some name or something, right? Or, or you probably did type def to uh, shorten it out. And whatever like integer x comma y, I think uh, no or something. Let's call it no. Um, then then you declared an instance of that node. Uh, struct node node one something like that so it's similar so internally in this library over here they have declared this part for you this uh, struct node part which is basically the vector defined and you are declaring an instance of that class over here and that's why uh, you you can you can have vector of vectors instead of two D arrays you can have vector of vectors oh let me go quickly over that too. So for vector vectors, like this is how you declare a vector, right? Now you have to put your data type over here. But I don't want a data type. I want an object type. That is vector. I want another vector. This uh, and that vector should have integers. 
also this now represents a 2D vector. So when you declare a vector of size n, oh, yeah, I need to have n, 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 n equals five. Um, so what I can do is that then I can, in vector of zero, I can push back. For example, like now when I index vector of zero, this thing is going to represent an individual vector, right? Because this thing that I had right now over here, it was vector of vectors. So I can do vector zero dot push back. Um, let's say one. And I'm going to copy it. Two and three. Let's, let's change it to two. And then So uh, I have a vector of vectors, and in the first vector of my vector of vectors, uh, it, it, it's one, two, and three the values, and in the second vector there are five, six, and the values are five, six, and seven. And like I'll just print it out for or you all to understand it. I can go over like integer i from zero. I want to iterate till vector dot size. Note that this is equal to two. I know that already. But why write it when you can uh, have the program do it for you? <clears throat> now I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll simply print out a string. The size of this vector is vec dot size vec i dot size. And now I'm gonna print out the elements of that vector. Now I, uh, I will iterate till, till uh, vector i dot size, right? Because uh, I'm concerned about the vector inside the vector. And how will I access the value of that? I'll do vector i that's going to point to the first vector, and then I'll, I'm going to go to the j element of that vector. So I run this. So I get the first vector one, two, three, and the second vector uh, five, six, seven. So like you can of course have vector of vectors. You can have vector of vectors or vectors, or like it can go on. I'll I'll, I'll go to strings now, and uh, uh, then I'll show you that you can have vector of strings too. Um, cool. So uh, basically, what what did you and what did you guys do in C when you had to do a string input output? You declare a character array. Of suppose size 50, 500, or whatever, and then you treat it as character array as a string. Uh, it's, 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 it's exactly the same analogy uh, in uh, C. You, you want to declare vectors, uh, instead of where you want to declare a vector of characters. So it's going to be a vector cat. But why, like this strings, you often deal with strings in real life, right? So STL implemented this thing for us already and gave it us gave it to us in the form of a string. Or uh, this is an object string. So somewhere above in this library, there's something called struct string uh, with some properties over here. It's actually class. I'm writing struct over here. And I'm just using that instance of that uh, struct or class that has been declared above in the library. So I can declare a string like this called str equals nothing empty string. And uh, uh, it can be a, b, c, or whatever. The good thing is, now suppose like c in and c out, uh, like you, you probably don't, uh, what you did, uh, you guys didn't see was you did scan f and then specified uh, that you want to input a string and pass and uh, the pointer to the array without the ampersand. Like it, it, it's really tedious. Uh, over here, you can just do cn str and whatever the input is, you, you'll get it. Uh, uh, inside, it will be stored inside the string. Uh, so I'll do, uh, I'll show it to you, demonstrate it once. So here I'm running it. Uh, let's say c plus plus. So it's going to output C++ for me. This person size is again because I don't have a new line. That's why it is like that Z. OK. Uh, so internally, there's nothing. It's just vector of characters, but it has been given to us as a, like already implemented for us with additional features. 
Oh, excuse me. So what do we mean by internally or whatever? So the topic is right now. What like uh, uh, the, the question which Ashwat asked? Oh, uh, could yeah, you repeat I that? What's the what, question? Uh, all what was Ashwat's question? All of strings and vectors are internally. In, sorry, strings and dqs and qs are internally mostly all vectors. So their base type, like the their yeah, they so, are wrapper on a vector, basically. So, oh, like in in C, what you guys used to do was you declared a character array, right? Similarly, yes. over here, you'd have to declare a vector of characters instead of an array. You'd have to declare a vector for strings. But the good thing is, it's already been done for you in the library, so you don't actually need to declare a vector of uh, characters. You can it it has already been wrapped for you and uh, uh, implemented for you, and it, it's it's being called string. And by and why won't why then uh, one might ask that why won't you why I can use vector of characters too, right, rather than a string. Like you can use it, but by using string, you'll you'll get additional features. I'll I'll tell you about those features now. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um. So f one of the features is uh say concatenation. Yeah, string str1 equals abc. You have string str2 equals def. Then, I mean, what you guys used to do in C was if you want to join these strings together, you would probably have to iterate, would have to create a new string str3 and then uh, or a character array and then iterate over it and uh, for the first three values assign str1 and for, for the next three values assign str2 but like all of that is really tedious uh, in c++ you can just do str3 equals str1 plus str2 it's going to concatenate it for you like these are the special features that i was talking about because you can't if, if you use vectors instead of strings you can't do vec1 plus vec2 that is not a valid operation for vectors but for vector of but, but for strings they have added this functionality for you that you can directly add them just concatenation. Now if I output this string, oh okay, I need that thing string. I get A B C D E F. Like this is one of many features for like. A lot of features are there. You can look at the documentation to get knowledge of each and every feature, but I'll go through some of them. Um, you can, in fact, compare strings. How, how did you guys compare strings in C? If you wanted to check one string is equal to another, you probably kept like a value integer uh, check equals uh, one or something, and then you iterated over the string character by character. And in case the characters don't match up, you did check equals zero. And then you, you later check the value of this variable check to know whether it is uh, the same or not. But over here, you can just check if you can just use this equal to operator. Uh, it has like internally what happens is that uh, C++ or the standard template library it has uh, it has given a special feature to this equal equal to sign to sign a special uh, meaning to this equal to equal to sign for the comparison of strings. And then you can see out yes r equal now if i run this i will not get this output but if i change it to the same string i get this output so like these are the reasons like these are like see this is a huge reason why you should do C plus plus over C. Oh uh, yeah. You can also add the else branch for less than greater than. Yeah yeah I'm gonna talk about that. So one more thing is uh it 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 comes up uh, not that often but yeah it does come up that you have to compare strings. How do you say one string is less than another? So if you put all the strings that you have if you put them in a dictionary order that's called a lexicographical order then you can compare strings so the string a b c d is actually less than the string zebra because z comes much later than a so suppose i have the string apple 
and I have the string banana. Then I can put a uh, I can use the syntax a string one is less than equal to sorry if less than uh, a string two uh, three out less as str one is equal equal to str two three out equal as str So um, if you look at the dictionary order, then apple comes before banana. Should this should actually output less, and it outputs less. That's uh, uh, that's like uh, in C. Imagine doing this. You you'd have to code yourself, check one the characters one by one, and do it, do this thing. But like a lot of these features have already been implemented for you in C plus plus. And why do you want to bother to write the code again for it when you can make mistakes by doing so? Note that uh, when you compare strings, it's it's not the same as comparison of integers, okay? Because when when you compare the integers, it's like it takes only one operation to compare the integers. But for strings, uh, it looks like it takes only one operation because it's it, it looks the same as integers. But internally, it's actually iterating over all the characters and checking one by one. So if my string one is of length n and my string two is of length m, so it is going to take O of n plus m number of operations. Internally, it is like that. Same goes for the comparison of strings. It takes order n plus m operations to do so. Um, so just like vectors, uh, let's say a uh, string has that integer of str one dot size. So in C, you would have something called str length function, right? Which calculated the length of a string. And how did it calculate it? it it treated over string until and unless it encountered the null character. Backslash O to check the length of the string. Um, and it took order n time to do that, to do that. But str one dot size, it, it, just like vectors, it already maintains a variable inside it. So when when you do something like str one plus equals the letter R of support, internally it is gonna do size plus plus something like that internally to increase the size so that you can get the size of the string in just one operation. Internally, it maintains the variable for that. If I do Rahul, which takes up five characters, then it's going to do size plus equals five for me. So that's why this thing, uh, this function called str1.5, it takes only order one of time. And that is the reason I can use the size function to in the loop while iterating it. While iterating, I did this before, right? I less than a vector size. If this thing would have taken uh, an operation, suppose, or an operation, that this, this entire loop would have not have been of linear complexity. So these are the small uh, little features that uh, make C++ what it is compared to C. Um, OK. Uh, as of now, this is what I plan to cover about strings. If anyone has any questions, uh, I'll answer them, else I'll move on. And mind you that these are not only, uh, like these are only some of the features. There are a load of, a huge amount of features available with strings themselves, and you can look up the documentation for that. So oh, there are lots and lots of messages. Yeah, yeah, we, me and Amul are checking them. That's okay. Um, so, for example, someone asked about the substring method. So you can maybe show that. So there's a method called substring. Oh, yeah, that's a really powerful method. Um, let me show that. Yeah, it's very very useful in generally diff two B or C problems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I might have actually forgotten the syntax, but let me try it out. So if I have the string uh, apple, let me print out. Let me get rid of this part. I'll have only one single string. So one good thing to do if you are like in a contest and you know there exists a method that does something that you have seen before but you do not remember. So always just look at the documentation. It's super clean and 
it is very helpful okay rahul if you are speaking i'm not sure wait can anyone hear rahul hello okay you are back yeah Okay, no, Rahul. It seems. Yeah. In... Someone was saying something. Does documentation provide complexity? Yeah, it does. Rahul, whatever you said in oh, the first yeah. minutes didn't reach us, by the way. Oh. Oh yeah, I saw that my connection like somehow broke. Um, cool. Did I did did I type this all all of this thing in front of you? You typed it in one second. So yeah. Oh okay, lol. I'll go over it again. No, but like you can don't need to retype it. Just. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just go over it. So, uh, there is this thing. Uh, if you want to extract, it does a string from A. Two A plus B. Uh, this is gonna be a close. Lost you every once again. Oh, know. one thing. Oh, I don't know why that's happening. Let me check. Oh, oh I'll continue. Now, in case it happens again, just tell me. I'll switch to my mobile data then. It's kind of uh, reliant. Am I audible right now? Yeah. Okay. If if it happens again, then I'm going to switch to my mobile data. So you, I guess you, you guys are familiar with this mathematical representation in set theory, right? From A to A plus B with closed bracket and a opening bracket, which is inclusive, and this thing is excluding. So when you pass it a comma b to this uh, function, it's gonna start from zero in in this case and end up till here. That is str dot size. But if I pass in the value one, it is only gonna display a. If I uh, go over here and pass in the value from one till three, so what is it gonna display? It is gonna start at the position one. It's zero indexed, and it's gonna display the next the the three characters that's p p l. It displays PPL for me. So, um, like this is a, another really useful feature. Uh, often, yeah, it, it got a it pops up a lot in diff, division to ABC problems. And often, people actually don't know about this function, and they manually calculate the substring. And it creates a lot of difference between people who use this function and the people who are manually type out the calculation of substring, uh, uh, which creates like. A difference in rank of about one thousand in the first ten minutes of the contest. So it's really important that you know uh, about these functions. Um. So yeah, that's that's one really important function. Like all of this, you can find it in the documentation. Is there a way for reversing strings or something like Python reverse slicing? Yeah, there is. So um, I I talked about reverse function in. Uh, Vectors, right? In strings, also you can first find out the strings. Suppose you assign this thing to, or uh, let's say, str string str2, and then you can uh, do str2 equals no, not equals, sorry, uh, reverse str2 dot begin str2 dot end, and then you can see out str2. So I I think if I implement it correctly, it should output L L P P instead of P P L. Yep. So yeah, uh, you'll have to get familiar with these functions. It's, it's uh, you are calling reverse separately, right? So yeah. I think what we can instead do is um, maybe I'll have to check that, but maybe we can use the reverse iterators to get this job done. 
something like r begin and then r begin plus so, would get the but i don't know that depends on what input does this does it allow a traitor input right, or not right, right. i don't i don't yeah. i can't seem to find yeah. it we'll have to check yeah uh, the answer to that is check the documentation you will find out on the documentation whether it allows the traitors or not so uh, uh i'm i'll i'll be jumping to iterators after this now uh i know it's already 9:30 but uh, yeah at 20 minutes i think i'll take for iterators but before that if anybody else has any questions yeah any, yeah that, that's what i'm waiting for questions on strings oh uh, you don't have to bother with null characters okay because uh, it already internally does that for you in most cases Uh, so for, for strings will it read the white spaces as well uh see if you use the uh, the function uh, this uh, cn method it is not going to use uh, read the white spaces but if you want to read the white spaces you'll have to go and use some methods like get line or uh, uh, there are methods called f getters or f getters and getters but uh, by default cn it doesn't uh, Actually, so as soon as it encounters a white space, it stops the input. Right. You asked a very good question. We have had this wrong answer in a couple of places where it was expecting to read a phrase, and by habit, we just do see in string, and it yeah. only the first token and ignores the rest, and we got a wrong answer. So, <laughs> so good, good point. And you can use the square bracket notation. It's just like a wrapper. Yeah, it can be used. Yeah, it's just like vectors internally. It's vectors, and vectors internally are arrays. So yes, you can use that. so to access if i want to change a particular character of the string i can do str 0 equals let's see b or let's change this to o something above it then if i do say out str actually if you are typing a single character right it has to be in single bracket single uh, quotation marks so now output opal i think so yeah so you can uh Yeah, you can access them using the square bracket notation. Does str dot size include null character? No, it doesn't. And uh, you don't even have to bother with null characters if you're using C plus plus strings. Uh, any questions on strings? There's one more in the chat. Is uh, isn't there something like literal string literals in C plus plus? String literals. What are what do you mean by string literal? Exactly a string literal that you're seeing. Apple. This is a. If you compile this, if you see the assembly, it would be shown as an apple. Oh, sorry. Okay, string literals. I think then quotation marks. Yeah. Uh, So yeah, so like if if this is a string literal, then it 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 is being assigned to the string. So like in string in C, uh, we cannot modify this, I guess. Uh, oh, you can. They they're not immutable. Uh, you can modify them. Did I not modify it right now? Or uh, using uh, I change the first character of the string. Or you're saying uh, do do you want to modify this thing? If you if you're saying, you, can you do something like uh, apple dot size? No, sir. Actually, um, uh, I don't think uh, this thing, like this kind of thing, is allowed. You have to actually store it in a, a, a string object, and then you uh, and then uh, use this size function. Actually, so if we look at the error message, it's quite instructive. By default, yeah. the, a literal is a const char six six because there is yeah. a null character. But uh, when you assign it with the equal to sign to a string data type, then it this operator is probably overloaded, so it internally handles the conversion from a yeah const char yeah six. exactly. Um, uh, yeah, if we're going into detail, then that that's what happens when you when you actually literally type in double quotes. On your text editor, the word apple. It's 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 not uh, a string by default. It's it's a const. It's a character of six arrays. Uh, it's a character of six. Uh, it's an array of six characters. Sorry, and it is converted uh, to a string, and uh, uh, the it's assigned 
to the memory location when you do the equal to sign. Uh, that operator, insider operator, there are, there are functions like there's code that literally does that line by line, uh, character by character. What is it assigned to? Like uh, it assigns to whatever uh, location the string is being stored at. So uh, when you ask the compiler to uh, when you, when when you just say string s, so uh, and when it passes to the compiler, the compiler actually allocates some memory address on your RAM for this particular string s. And when you do s equals apple, then for that particular mem uh, for that particular cell in the RAM, and the next four or uh, five or four uh, cells uh, after that, uh, over there it stores apple. You can imagine it to be like that. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, I'm talking about the apple dot size. Like uh, you said, it converts from const cat to something. Like like yeah, it compares from const cat to the string, but like th this thing is not allowed. This thing it is not allowed, and so you have to actually declare a string to like access you the. You haven't literal. converted the literal, right? So maybe you can just uh, for the C out line, you can just put apple inside of the string constructor. So you can call string on apple and then dot. Okay. okay, let me try that. I've never done that. You saying this? Okay. So it now yeah, then it internally, uh, yeah. In this case, it creates an object and immediately discards it away. Then, like at compile time, this will be just one line. But um, okay, so um, should I move on to iterators? Then, uh, I had a question. Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so usually in some like coding competitions, there is a, a format that uh, like certain numbers are given in the form one, then a blank space, then two, then blank space. So uh, yes, yes. if we store this input string in, in some, let's say, variable str, now uh, using C, C, CIN, how are we supposed to store it in uh, variable? That's the thing. Uh, if you're talking about uh, computer programming and uh, uh, you're saying space separated uh, things are there in the input, right? Are those numbers or strings only? Uh, that is a uh, one big string only. The space separated numbers, yeah. Yeah, space separated numbers. Then, then why even bother using strings? Then you can do vector. Then you can use vector to store it, right? If it's just integers. When you do, uh, uh, suppose uh, the input is like one, two, three, four, five in a single line, right? Space separated. Something like uh, this without the quotation. Oh, sorry. Something like this without the quotation marks, right? Uh, yes. Yes. Then, uh, then you can do vector int vec, and when you take uh, like take the input, it's it's not gonna bother with the spaces. It's gonna ignore the spaces. Like uh, how how scene works is that. Uh, as soon as it encounters the space or a blank, a white space or a new line character, it stops taking the input. And when you do see in back I, right, when you do this thing, uh, then uh, it's going to encounter the first number, take the input, it encounters the white space over here, it stops. Then it's going to loop again for the second input, encounters it and stops all the way till five. It encounters a new line, stops, and since you have specified the maximum number of iterations to be five, it stops the for loop and goes uh, CN. Uh, so you don't have to bother by, by taking the entire input and then stripping it differently. Yes, that's, uh, something that you, uh, 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 that's something that uh, you. That's something you do in Python, I think. Uh, I think uh, you are a Python programmer. I'm guessing, I guess. Yes, uh, uh, and uh, thanks for answering. Also, a follow up. Uh, instead of let's say one two three four, uh, there are some random strings uh, like A B C, let's say D F and such yeah, and such. Yeah, you so, think A B C. Uh, yeah, something yeah, like all, that, right? Yes, uh, and uh, let's say we have a vector of strings. So the same okay. vector, uh, that you have written in the. Oh form. yeah. If 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 you if you if you let's say this is X Y Z and that's it. So you're gonna have a vector of strings, and this is gonna be three, right? Yeah, uh, and the same and, procedure will work. Yeah, exactly, it will work because how is it gonna work? It's the same concept again. It it encounters it, uh, A B C. It takes all of it in. As soon as it encounters a space, it stops, allocates it, it assigns it to the uh, it assigns it to back of zero, then moves on for D E F and so on. 
yes yes and uh, uh, just the last follow up uh, let's say this is the case also and uh, certain numbers are also involved let's say the name of persons are given and the and their ages are given yeah. after so uh, how would you tackle that like uh, how would uh, so the problem the problem is there so in that case do you want the numbers to be stored as a string or as numbers uh, as number I, uh, yeah let let's say it, it should be stored as a number okay so you've got uh, 556 suppose in between so what you do uh, firstly declare a vector of four string uh, like four strings or whatever uh, uh, the amount is and then you take it one by one and there are some functions in c uh, in the library uh, which you can use to determine whether the string itself has only numbers inside it and then you can like there is this function called atoi or uh, look it up in the documentation what it does it when you pass in a string called 567 567 or 56 it is going to output to you either minus 1 or the number 56 so it actually checks one by internally what happens is it checks the, whether the uh, character is in the range of ascii 0 to ascii 9 and if it is if all the characters are in the range of ascii 0 to ascii 9 then it converts them to an actual number by uh, like it takes in the number 6 assign it to the unit place then multiplies 5 by 10 that's 50 and add 6 to it to get 56 and it does all that for you and it turns out 56 and if it's not a number it's going to output minus 1 or some something else you'll have to look up look that up in the documentation but there are functions for that that you can use yes uh, thank you did you get it So in case you, you you can have an if else condition and check if the output of this thing is invalid, then you got a string. Otherwise, you got a number. So is there a way to convert a string into a number and vice versa? Yeah, there is. Uh, if see if, if the string itself is a string of numbers only, if there are only numbers like fifty six, fifty five, or whatever that is, then you can interchange them between ATOI or the, I think there is another function called STOI. Or something like that to convert from integer to string. I forgot the name of the function, but there, there is. Let me look it up quickly for you. Um, there is std two string, which takes an integer or something and converts it to a string. So that's the way to do it. And for and for string to integer, you have s two ll, s two ull. And yeah. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Uh, S. So I think uh, S T O I. Yeah. Okay. There's S. There's A also. So what does it S it stand for? S to I means integer. So you can have uh, L L for uh, long and all like Quran is saying. Yeah. That's that's good. And 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 for vice versa also there are functions. I might not remember it right now, but yeah, you can look that up in the documentation. Okay. Um. Uh. Any. Any. Anything else? So another way to tackle the problem that someone was mentioning was that you could just keep two vectors, right? One for ages and one for names, and take the input. But uh, he was saying that uh, if the, all of them are in a single uh, place and you don't know, like, uh, uh, you don't know whether you're gonna encounter a number or a string next. No, but uh, wouldn't there usually be some kind of a structure that there are n? Yeah, yeah. In competitive programming, there's always going to be a structure to things. But uh, right. yeah, in competitive programming, they're going to specify whether the input is going to be a number or it's going to be a string, and, and so, you have to declare things uh, in that. For example, way. they'll be say that there will be n lines. Each line will have two tokens. The first being the name and the second yeah. being the age. Or they'll be saying that there are two lines. Each line contains n tokens, and the first line contains all the names. And the second line contains yes. all the ages. Yes. Uh, in competitive programming, you're never gonna encounter a situation uh, where you'll have to manually parse the string one uh, for the tokens one by one. Also, I'll just oh. mention one last thing related to strings. Um, that yeah. when you read the docs, you're always gonna encounter something known as a basic string instead of a string. So that's gonna confuse you for a while. But don't worry about it too much. What basic string is? It is like this a turn of wrapping around in this uh, documentation. So basic string is a kind of a more primitive container as compared to a string, and it 
it allows for more different kind of characters so you can read the documentation there are multiple types of characters that you can store so basic string accommodates for all of them and if you're looking for the default char type that you are familiar with just use string so in the documentation you're going to see basic string everywhere but just treat it as a string and uh, go about your daily work it's not a big deal as long as you're not going into the details for now in most cases you won't need to know what it's doing so yeah. okay um if you wanted to store the coordinates of a point into a graph you could use vector pair and and dimensions um okay uh, i was going to cover pairs also today but seems like there's no time i'll, I'll just cover iterators but yeah uh, specifically asking uh, like answering your question pull up you can declare a struct of integers and if you if you already know the number the number of integers else you can do a vector of vectors right what's the bad thing about that yeah okay um cool so let's go over iterators so you guys have studied pointers right and like uh iterators are something very similar to pointers and uh, let's like let's 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 dive into it and see how they work oh okay so when i said that uh, when you want to sort an array you do vec dot begin and vec dot end right and if you have a vector called vector of integer vec whatever be the size let's say 5 so this vec dot begin and vec dot end are actually iterators so iterators imagine them to be pointers on the vec dot begin let let's see let's assume that my vector is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so my vec dot begin points towards the first element of the vector that is the zeroth element of the vector and vec dot end it does not point at the end of the vector it points at the memory address internally it is stored uh, everything is stored in memory right in ram so vec dot begin actually points towards the beginning of your array it it is the same as the memory if in c you had int array uh, array file and then uh, array arr would point towards the beginning of your array similarly vec dot begins uh, points towards the beginning of your vector and if you look at it and do uh, where does r plus 5 point to that's the question then uh, it, uh, it pointed towards if you do pointer arithmetic it will point towards the end of the, the last element of the vector or, or of the array plus 1 similarly uh, vec dot end it, it, it you can assume it to be a pointer to the end of the vector plus like the last space something over here it's like um not the last element but the space after that and like there is there's a reason why they have done it this way and oh, it will be explained later it will it be clear to you later so uh, why are they called iterators i mean that's pretty uh because like they used to it they, they are used for it iterating over it so the so the correct way so let's um basically vectors strings stacks queues dqs whatever your data structure are all of them are used to store data right uh that's why they called data structures and strings are used to store characters and like all of these are called containers and in containers uh you want to iterate over the containers for vectors what you do is you do int i equal to 0 i less than 5 i plus plus and then uh you access it using this square notation vector of i but that you, you can do that easily because the vectors are actually stored in a contiguous memory but what if they are not stored in a contiguous memory probably you guys would have implemented a linked list right a linked list is not stored in a contiguous memory what do you do in that case you can't do uh, like uh, you can't just access them using this so that's why we have iterators uh, how how do we iterate over any general container it could be a vector it could be a linked list it could be a stack a queue or a string we do is something like um uh, let's let's first declare an iterator we declare an iterator like vector int 
ID. Oh, did I mess it up? Is this not how you declare it? Um, no, no, this is, this is how you declare it, yeah. And like, yeah, it, it sounds like it looks kind of scary, but it's okay. IT, then you, how do you want to iterate over it? You want to start at IT equals back dot begin. And you want to end at, what's your stopping condition? You want to stop when IT uh, is equal to back dot end. You want to stop at that point. So when this condition is actually false, then your for loop breaks out. And then you can do IT plus plus. That's one thing of the uh, fun feature of the iterator that the, the only operation that you're allowed to do on iterators is you can increment it or you can decrement it uh, for any standard iterator. And then you can, since it's a pointer like object, you can output, you can, you have to TF reference it to output. Ouch. Oh, yeah, output it. So let, let's uh, declare this vector to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Uh, we remove the sorting line that's not necessary and let's output this. So it's gonna output one, two, three, four, five for me. Um one thing you could do is you could replace this thing uh, with the word the type auto. So see you know that your vector is going to return and uh, a special type of iterator that is the vector integrator. So in case you don't actually want to type out the actual data type of this uh, IT variable, you can use the term auto. So what it does it it see it refers to the uh, data type of the uh, on the right hand side of your equality your assigning operator assignment operator and looks at the data type and puts it over here by during the compilation. So that's like just some syntactical sugar. It's, it's easier to write in that way, but you can't do something like vector auto vec. Like that's just ridiculous. You can't. That, that's not allowed. Okay. It, it's only when you are assigning something then you can do it because it actually reads the data type on the right hand side. But when you do vector of auto, then it doesn't have a data type on the right hand side. There is no right hand side. So uh, this is how you iterate. Use iterators to iterate over a vector. Like, why would one do this at all when you can simply iterate using um, i equal to zero and i less than n, right? Like the reason I told you already. That's because what if you want to iterate over containers that are not stored in a contiguous manner? If it's a linked list, then you have to use this kind of syntax. So, as of now, this is what I'm uh, like. This is all that I'm talk. I'm gonna talk about iterators. I'll show them actually in use when we cover advanced data structures like sets and maps. So you can't iterate over sets or maps using i equal to zero, i less than n. You'll have to use iterators to iterate over, that, over them. So I'm gonna talk more about them and explain it, or uh, like uh, uh, use it in sets and iterators in the next session. But uh, if you have any doubts uh, in whatever I said right now, or if you have a doubt in understanding that what is the need of an iterator, then please ask right now. Uh, I had a question about uh, the <clears throat> the initialization of the iterator. Yeah, um, yeah. You did vector int colon colon iterator id. So does that make vector int a name? So and that huh. and like every time I use a different data type in the Angular brackets, it's a different namespace. Yeah, it is different. So you can't use. Uh, so once you declare uh, id. Let's call it it2 because I've already declared it. Um, so uh, suppose you declare it2. Now you, you can't use the same iterator for vector of long long or vector of floats. Okay. It's so, it, uh, it sometimes I, I think it might be allowed, but it's not a good practice at all to do that. So means uh, if I did vector float colon colon iterator it2, that will be a problem. So yeah, it might be float on the same namespace. So. Uh, no, they are different things. Uh, the, uh, the iterator that you're uh, declaring, it's in different namespace. Okay. And 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 suppose suppose uh, one more thing is you declare auto, you declare auto, it two equals uh, vec dot begin. Then you can't use this it two iterator for vector of floats. Why is that? Because as I said, it refers to the right hand side. 
and checks what the data type is during the compilation. So uh, when you have already compiled it, it replaces this uh, auto by a vector of integer iterator. That's why you can't use it with floats. And uh, later down the line, is there a way to uh, programmatically know uh, whether IT2 is a is a is an iterator for vector of floats or whether it's an iterator for vector vector of ends? Hmm. Uh, I think uh, you can use type of expression. I'm just gonna uh, yeah. Let's try it out. I've never done that myself. If I do this thing, hmm. So one English compiler, but like if you want to know the data type of anything, it's usually in this type. You can do type of and find it out. I've done that in Python often, but let's check it out and see. Let's just how do we use type of? Is it is, does it have to be type class into a string? Uh, I'm really not sure about this. I'm just trying to think so. Oh, I think there's a double semicolon at the end. That's oh, but no, that should create a problem though. That's just like an empty line. Hmm. Let me Google this thing. Okay, so I mean that's what Google says that there's this thing called type ID, similar to type of. Oh, yeah, and so too. So if I do it two over here, I think this should print it out. Oh, okay. So it it prints out whatever in like whatever is the form of that thing. Uh, I think if I Google this string, I copy this string to my clipboard, and I Google that, I might find out the data type. Uh, actually, to be fair, uh, I had the same question okay. when I started reading about it, these things, but honestly, I never found any practical use for finding out the data type after it has been declared. Like, yeah, I, uh, why would we need that? Honestly, like I had the I same mean, question, but then now. See, uh, like, uh, well, yeah, uh, th that's also correct because you have already declared it. Uh, you know the data type. That's true. But see, uh, internally it it does store it in this format. Now, what does this exactly mean? Uh, how does C plus plus interpret this thing? Uh, I don't know about that. But you can see some things like normal iterator, and you can see vector over here, and I think capital I would refer to integer or something. Then, like, if you can decode this thing, then you can can probably find out. Understood. Sir. Thank you. If that answered your question, let me let me try out with floats. Let's see what changes. Uh, in the meantime, uh, if anyone uh, else wants to ask anything, so uh, can I mention something? Uh, see, this thing changed to float instead of uh, it's changed to f instead of i. So I've got a vector, I've got a vector and it changed to F. So like you can decode this thing to find out what the iterator was. Yes, Tanmay. So Tanmay mentioned something so that brings like I wanted to mention something that there are different kinds of iterators. So the one yeah. we are using in vectors is a random access iterator. Yeah. It allows you to randomly access any index. Whereas in if you use a set or a map, which Rahul will cover in the next session. You will get what is called an arbitrary iterator, in which you cannot actually just arbitrarily access indices. You must walk the tree from the left node to the parent node to the right node. So, on when you write colon colon iterator, it uses the correct one. Like it uses the arbitrary iterator or the arbitrary is the red black tree, the balanced tree that the set internally uses. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so see that's uh, that's the thing. Uh, when when we declare vector int iterator, as you as, as Tanmay is pointing out, we can in fact I did I said that the only operations allowed are plus plus and minus minus, but I also mentioned that that it is for standard iterator. It is for the entire class of iterators. 
but if you want to specially dive into vectors and the iterators involving vectors then yes you can do a special type of arithmetic operation that is plus 5 or plus any number and that and that is because it is actually stored at a contiguous uh, at the contiguous block of memory but if you uh, if you go to set set of integers and then uh, the iterator in that namespace then that that is not allowed you can't directly add 5 if you want to go plus 5 steps you have to do plus 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 it five times to get to the place that you want to go. The reason because of that is when, when, when you tell the computer to go uh, to five blocks next to you uh, for a set, that, that block might not actually belong to the set at all because, uh, it, uh, because it's not a random access iterator. It's not stored at a continuous, at a continuous clo uh, block of memory. I'll cover uh, it uh, related to sets uh, during uh, uh, the next session. But one good thing about that is, uh, I was going to come to that, but thanks for pointing that out in man. That one, since you can do IT1 plus 5, so if you want to sort a substring or like a sub vector, uh, so you've got this thing. Let's change it to 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And by the way, that, let's reverse it first. Just for for the sake of doing it, since we know that it actually exists. So over here I have 54321 now, and I want to actually sort vec.begin till vec.begin plus 2. So actually, I want to only sort the first two elements. print them out. So it sorts the first two elements, 4, 5, it would have been 5, 4, right? So it sorts it to 4, 5, and 3, 2, 1. So actually you can sort, um, or what do you say, a sub vector of the entire vector. And actually you can sort strings too. So if you sort, you can, let's see, that's one more thing of the, that's the benefit of representing uh, a string as a vector. Internally, a string is a vector, so you can sort a string too, and it's going to order that uh, string alphabetically for you. So the word zebra is going to be, I guess, uh, A, B, E, R, Z, if you sort that. Uh, OK, uh, back to traders. Uh, any, any more questions? How do you add an element at a location pointed? How do you add an element at a location? Okay, yeah, nice. Uh, so once you're accessing it, right? Uh, uh, you have an auto ID. Let's see. So ID equals vector begin. So how do you? Uh, actually change the value, then you have to dereference it first, just like pointers, and do plus equals 5 or plus equals 6. I think that should change the value of the iterator. Let, let's test it out, and actually, let's, let's test it out. It might not, I have a small doubt about this too. Let's check it out. Oh, not print for him. That's fine. <laughs> Yeah, they change it to six. So you dereference it and then add it just as you do in pointers. Uh, the ampersand thing, uh, right now, I don't have the time to come to the, uh, uh, like the reference iterators. Uh, I'll, I'll cover that in the next session. There's actually, uh, you know, uh, you don't actually need to do, okay. It's already 10. Should I, should I tell them about this thing right now? The syntactical sugar for a for loop, Koran? Yeah, I guess we can. Okay. <laughs> All right. If everybody is in the show. Um, so oh, it's, it's really tedious to even type out auto int equals to vec dot big and drive. And uh, it is not equals to vec dot n. Then do plus it plus plus. And then actually print the elements out by dereferencing it. I mean, why see whatever your container is, be it a set or be it a vector, be it a string, 
do you think the first line of the for loop is ever going to change it is always going to be in most cases but if you want to it it from start to the end it's going to be whatever the name of the thing is dot begin it's going to end up at end and it's going to be it++ right so why even bother to write this entire thing so c++ came up with a better way to do it what all you got to do is i'll add out the new line or to separate output i'll do auto x like this is a variable x a colon and a and the name of the vector and then just print out x it is it, it's that easy so what inter, this thing is exactly the same as this um uh, and uh, let's let's run this thing see it prints out 1 to 3 over 5 1 to 3 over 5 uh this thing can be considered to be uh, um, an easier method to write this thing out it, it's if you if you know python it is something similar to for an element in a list and the good thing is that this thing can be a set it can be a stack it can be a queue tq whatever container it is it can be i'm going to cover the later just the containers in the next session don't worry about that right now but uh okay if you're covering this also uh, I, i'll do one thing see i'm going to say something. okay what does it does this it creates a copy of x of uh, x is a copy of the element uh in that vector and then it outputs it so if i do x plus equals 5 i'm incrementing everything by 5 and then outputting it i i just told the answer please can uh, oh sorry um uh, you have to output in a separate um, yeah actually i'm outputting x only done <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did this thing, and in a different for loop, I'm doing again x in vector. See how x. Yep. Now, can anyone tell me like why did the value not increase by five? Sir, so because it created a copy. It was not the actual vector. Yeah, exactly. So, what what does it correspond to? It corresponds to this thing, this loop that I did. Corresponds to for uh, like uh, int i equals to zero, i less than five, something similar to this. Then you declare inside it x equal to vector of i, and then you output x. So it is similar to that. What if you don't want this line? What if you actually want to directly edit the value? In that case, you have to reference it using this ampersand sign. Then it's it's not going to create a copy. It's directly going to edit your exact value that you have. So if I do auto ampersand x vec and do x plus equals five, then it's going to increase it by five. So uh, what I usually do in computer programming when I use do it, um, yeah, I always skip ampersand. Firstly, by even create a copy, right? It's additional overhead. So uh, keep 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 that unless you don't want to edit it. So like this is much easier. So uh, imagine if if I if it's it's a a problem and I just want to the question is just in, on code forces to take input, sort it, and output it again. So it's really easy to just type you use C plus plus in that instead of C. I'll just have to do for int n. I declare it, input it for in ampersand x in n, I can see in x. No need to declare the uh, curly. Or not this is gonna be. Uh, I have to declare a vector in x and input x. Then sort it. Vector n, and then again copy the paste this and instead of cn, I'm gonna see out it. Like it, it's if you're familiar with C++, this thing is really fast to code. But in C, you'd have to do a lot of bunch thing. First of all, like this for loop, it's gonna be huge. Int i equals to zero, i less than n, i plus plus. Then you scan f and print f, and then a queue sort, write a comparator. That see, these are the reasons why you should use C++ over C because it's just a better version of C. It's just like C++ literally. Um. Okay. Uh. 
Uh, anything else? I would carry. Yeah, it, it's kind of like pass by value. You, you could imagine that, that way. As we now that you mentioned pass by value, please don't Google uh, and uh, try to understand the ten different types of pass by X in C plus plus. There's L value. R, yeah. L oh. Value, the, it's absolute. Like very. very it's going to be a nightmare if you try to do that. Yeah, I I myself don't completely understand it yet. I tried to do that once and. It's I think there's something left value and right value too, right? Gona? L value, R value, exactly. There's a ton of oh, values. Yeah. So, but now just keep in mind yeah, that if you write anywhere, so Rahul, while you were mentioning, um, actually you deleted the entire code, but anyway, um, when you write, when he was writing int x equal to vec i, right? Yes. You can also write int ampersand x equal to vec i. You can put oh, yes. ampersand okay. almost anywhere. It literally yeah. uh, almost anywhere it works, and it means that you are taking the actual value. You are creating an alias for it. Exactly. Yes. So if if you have, for example, um, so I think so the often most that happens that where you will find this is uh, when you write a graph function DFS or anything, then you have to pass the adjacency list. Which is a vector of vectors. So do not yeah. pass it without the ampersand. Without the ampersand, yes, yes. you will create the full copy of the adjacency list, and it will TLE or MLE, but it will probably TLE. Yeah, it, it's it's going to TLE because uh, without ampersand, ampersand is a reference to it. It it's it's actually just creating an alias X for what you actually want to refer to. But if you remove the ampersand, it's creating a new copy altogether. And like just as like I'm casually mentioning it once, uh, one more thing that uh, probably if you want to copy an array in C plus in C, you'd have to create another array and copy it element wise. And if you have a vector over here in C plus plus, after you vector, you have some vec. You can just do auto v equals vec, and yeah, that's your new copy. But if you do auto ampersand v, it's not a new copy. It's just vector the vector itself in the form of v. You're just using v to access it. Okay. Well, compared to um, are there any see uh, if you want like a hands-on thing a hands-on or uh, Kind of experience for understanding some things. You can look at uh, Geeks for Geeks. However, I don't recommend that. Like, uh, I don't like their website that much. And uh, you should you should learn how to read it directly from the documentation too. It's gonna help in like uh, other languages too. For campus interviews, I mean placement interviews. Uh, I'm I'm not. Uh, <laughs> I don't know yeah, what that do. languages depending on their preferences. They will. I don't yeah, think sometimes this is the last thing you need to worry about. Yeah, uh, computer programming is not about getting placement and all. I mean, that could be one aspect aspect of it, but mainly people do it to enjoy it. Exactly. Like they and enjoy. Also, it. you like first, uh, like there will be a choice. Don't worry. Like this will be the last problem you have to worry about. There will be other problems before. Uh, these things, but anyway, so uh, like there are seventy of you, so uh, like you guys have the motivation. So feel free to ask more questions. Yeah, I can like the chat. Uh, there were a lot of questions on chat. That's very nice. Now, yeah, I think Rahul's done. So maybe you can just yeah, up. I'm done for today. And and in the next time, I I, I it's gonna be after one entire week. Uh, we, we're gonna cover sets. We're gonna cover maps. Stacks, DQs. You probably implemented a stack yourself in your DSA course, right? Like, why do that when you already have a stack? And implementing a queue using a linked list can be such a pain. But like, STL has done that already for you. So, like, attend that if you want to know about the advanced data structures. And uh, we're gonna compare, uh, cover pairs also. I mean, it's it's easy enough, but still, we're gonna cover that. And uh, writing your own custom comparator functions. We have to cover that. Can you have a separate session on implementing graphs in C++ and covering some? 
Oh, you mean, okay. Uh, I'm not sure whether I'd be the one, I'd be the best person to do that, but uh, I guess the programming club can have it, right? Gaurav? Yeah, yeah, we can definitely do that. And uh, that would not, yeah, that would be a graph theory session, introduction to graph theory session. Exactly. That would be separate thing. And uh, like, yeah, as Rahul said, the next session is next week. So, uh, Rahul, till then you can probably share some resources, general practice sense, thing. Just write yeah. out a list, right? I mean, don't list out the questions, but uh, give a list of uh, stuff they can do.